everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our presentation, Demystifying Embodied Energy. My name is Jessica Kabina, and I will be the moderator for today's course, brought to you by the Green Building Research Institute and presented by Laurel McEwen of McEwen. Here are the learning objectives for today's course. Explain the concept of embodied energy and how it is measured. Explain how embodied energy compares to carbon footprint and, and life cycle assessment. Discuss the difference in a material's embodied energy, its carbon footprint, and its life cycle assessment. Describe how LEED V4 evaluates embodied energy. Discuss how embodied energy will affect the future of building. And now I would like to introduce today's course instructor. Laurel McEwen is a dynamic sustainability strategist with over nine years of experience training and consulting on LCA with Fortune 500 companies. Between 2007 and 2012, Laurel developed the world's largest LCA online training program, training over 300 LCA practitioners and launching the world's first LCA training certificate program partnering with ACLCA for professional certification testing. Prior to her work in the field of LCA, Ms. McEwen worked on National C Products as Director of U.S. Research and Development for O'Donnell Usen Fisheries, a division of Con Agra as Marketing Director. Currently, she consults with corporations on the design of LCA studies, develops custom training materials for corporations, and produces sustainability briefings utilizing an e-learning platform. These briefings translate complex LCA studies into clear, actionable communications, helping to support sustainability initiatives by reaching large audiences quickly and cost-effectively. A successful educator and communicator of complex environmental information, she can unravel for any audience complex LCA information into simple, actionable components. She is just completing a year-long project with the World Resources Institute, producing a 10-hour online course on the Greenhouse Gas Scope 3 protocol, which will launch later this summer. So now, let me introduce Ms. Laurel McEwen. The Dictionary of Energy defines embodied energy as the sum of the energy requirements associated, directly or indirectly, with the delivery of a good or service. Delivery might mean trucking insulation from a supplier in Arizona to our building site in New York. But what does energy requirements mean? The 100 gallons of fuel the truck used to make the delivery? And is this the energy contained within the diesel, its BTU value? or the energy required to extract and manufacture the diesel, or both. Notice the definition uses the words directly and indirectly. Perhaps direct means the energy contained within the fuel, and indirect the energy required to make the fuel. A gallon of diesel has about 129,000 BTUs of heat energy available to do work, and it takes about 40,000 BTUs of energy to produce a gallon of diesel. Or does indirect mean something else? Perhaps indirect is the energy required to make the truck, required to deliver the insulation? So my point in showing all these definitions has been twofold, to make you not feel so bad about being confused by what embodied energy is, and to show you that there are two things to think about when you think of the term embodied energy. The first is, what's included in your measurement? This is known as the system boundary in life cycle assessment terminology, what is in and what is out of your study. The second is, how is the energy measured? We have seen all sorts of ways of describing this measurement in these past four definitions, including energy used, inherent energy, energy requirements, 
fuel value, energy which comes from, and energy that goes into. But none Embodied energy is becoming a key environmental concern. Just reducing the operational energy of a building is not going to be good enough in the future. You're going to have to consider the embodied energy trade-offs of various designs. Zero energy buildings are great, but what are the materials environmental costs? This is what you will be asked in the future. Both LEED and Green Globes are providing good incentives in their material and resource credits for low embodied energy designs. This is great. However, there is a lot of confusion about the credits. In my mind, this is due to the general lack of education on what embodied energy is and the massive ramp up of EPDs and confusion around them. Hopefully, you now have a good grasp on what embodied energy is and how it is measured, not only by the cumulative energy demand metric, but also by carbon footprints and LCA metrics. The real takeaway of this course, I hope, is that you are now going to be able to ask good questions. When someone says to you that their product's embodied energy is lower than another's, you will now know to ask if the system boundary is cradle to grave and if CED was used to measure it. If not, then the information may not be very useful to you and the number cannot be used in the LEED or Green Globes calculation. Regarding EPDs, let the market shake out, then go for these credits. The real opportunity right now is the comparative LCA credits. I hope you will consider working towards these LCA credits. Working on these will help your design teams learn about the environmental trade-offs of their choices. Typically, you're going to be surprised when you do your first LCA. Designs you thought were great environmentally may not be so great, and you are likely going to find some winning low LCA design solutions that you can apply across a lot of projects.